All the teams struggle with game fitness and uh, adhering to the, the, the COVID protocol because now uh, everybody was affected. The, the, the teams that were successful are teams that made the necessary adjustments here and there. And uh, something else when you came back, um, it's something that you've had to implement. And uh, I think about 10 days ago, I think on a Wednesday, uh, the players, uh, including Tom here, had to take their coronavirus tests uh, before getting into camp. The outcome of that? The, the, we're still waiting for the outcome, but we, we, we've, uh, we, 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 the, what, what we have, we've been doing, we've been do, uh, we're doing uh, regular checks so that uh, we are up to date because uh, there, is, uh, there is the mandatory FIBA, there's a mandatory FIBA 10 days before travel, then three days before travel, and then uh, uh, those kind of uh, checks. But uh, for us, we, we, we stretched it to five tests before, before we travel. Well, Bush, um, as a person who is based outside of the country, uh, Bush, this is something that you've had to go through. Your experience about being a player in this uh, coronavirus times? Um, it's, been a, it's been a little bit of a, of a hustle. Uh, honestly, uh, if you think about it, um, for example, I wasn't able to come and join the team when they, in the first go around because uh, I, I, I tested positive of COVID and I can't join my teammates and make also uh, like endanger anybody around me. So uh, it's been a tough hustle, especially for athletes like, uh, for example, like basketball is, is a really like up tempo and uh, contact sport. So like uh, as players, you know, like you can work out by yourself at home and, you know, try to keep in shape. But then like the game shape just comes from playing against each other, you know, and just because of the pandemic when we are not able to do a lot of contact sports. So it's been a tough hustle. But, but then we thank God that uh, slowly but surely things are getting back to normal. So it's a good thing for us. And also, now, let's talk about, first of all, the journey to the Afro Basket qualifiers. Kenya, by virtue of their, uh, the current ranking, and uh, by the way, guys, you're the biggest movers um, coming into, you know, the Afro Basket qualifiers that will be played from the 18th to the 20th of this month. Kenya have moved up seven places in the world rankings. The number is not interesting, 115, but up from... Uh, 122 and 20th in Africa, same rankings probably as the Harambe stars, you'd say. But the journey started when you had to play against South Sudan, Burundi, Somalia, Tanzania, and Eritrea. Let me simply call it the Zone 5 matches. So, gentlemen, I'll start with you, Bush. That experience, especially that critical game against South Sudan. Yes, uh, of course, for us as a, as a sports person, you know, you, you want to have the best competition that you can find, you know. And... Um, for us to be able to actually do that, because um, most people are seeing the South Sudanese, you know how South Sudanese are, they're tall, they, you know, say they look aggressive, but then for us, we, you know, we have a very good team and um, I will encourage everybody to take a look at uh, our games and you, you'll be very interested in what we have to offer. And um, we have a very good uh, team, you'll enjoy, it. you'll enjoy watching us play. Uh, so coming to the, into the, into the pre-qualifiers that will happen at Nyayo Stadium, uh, we went into, into it with high spirits because we are just coming from a very good uh, pre-season. Uh, we went to Mali, we went to Uganda, won the Zone 5 Championship, went to Afro Khan in Mali, and we were able to come, uh, come back with the silver medal, and which was uh, f the first time you know, in a major competition that we got that far. So we are looking to continue with the momentum. We have very good momentum going into this second round of the... Uh, uh, the Afro basket qualifiers, so we, are, we have high spirits and high, high hopes for ourselves. Coach, your take on you know, the pre qualifiers and also Afro can because it really gave them um, a new aspect, you know, about how the public uh, was looking at Tim Moran's going into the pre qualifiers. Uh, my, take, my take is uh, uh, this journey began earlier than the pre qualifiers, it, it began. It began in uh, 2018 when uh, we, we decided that uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be training uh, once or twice a week. Then uh, after, that, after that, that momentum went to, to Uganda. By the time we went to Uganda, we, we, were, we were able to win, win uh, that tournament. Then uh, we went to Mali. Mali, we, we, we came up short in the finals. And by the time we, we, we came for the pre-qualifiers in, in uh, January last year, we, 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 had, uh, we, we had started bonding as a team. We had uh, been, uh, we, 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 were, we were through a lot of uh, 
uh, fights. Now we 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 we, we, are, we are gelling as a team, and uh, things things look great. Even though even though we were, we didn't have certain players here and there, but but the the, the Moran spirit was there. And I want to talk about something that's, you know, come, uh, that come up and uh, the Kenya Basketball Federation did this. I remember, I think in 2019, you know, I actually had a conversation with the Mr. Orero and uh, asked him, when it comes now to having players, for example, you know, Bush, Tyler, uh, we had Nyakundi who also came in for the pre-qualifiers, uh, pre how much of, you know, cooperation have you had trying to bring in what we call the foreign-based legion in the Moran side? Uh, we've uh, we've had uh, you see you see like uh, right now we've uh, we, we are we, we have gotten uh, government support we have gotten uh, support from rental company we've, we've gotten support from NOC, we've gotten support from the K K KBF by with uh, uh, our chairman uh, Otula's leadership and uh, we, we we've we've had uh, goodwill for. Kenyans abroad, so we, we have uh, we have a lot of support now. When it comes to and and also we have a, a, a board a board that also helps in uh, handling the national team. So we, we've gotten support from uh, various stakeholders, which, which has made it possible to get uh, to get uh, our our players from abroad. And f so let's basically take a look at this. Uh, one thing that didn't happen and. Uh, We'd like to ask from the first round of qualifiers that was played in Rwanda, US based Preston Bungay, he came into the country but could not travel. Has the issue of uh, Preston been sorted out? Yes, it has been sorted out, and uh, Preston can't wait, can't wait to play. He's, he's ready to go. As uh, he said, uh, yeah, after, after, after our last match in, uh, in Mozambique, uh, no, in, uh, in Rwanda against Mozambique, he said, guys, February, I'm here. Uh, uh, he, he can't wait to go, so he's, uh, he's good to go. He'll, he'll be available, and uh, everything is uh, all the paperwork is sorted. All right, yes, and talking about Mozambique, we shall be joined by uh, journalist Joao Shival. He is based in, uh, Moza in Maputo with TV Mozambique. He's going, he's going to be giving us some insights into the Mozambique team and also Angola, who are in the same group. Kenya, remember, they are with Angola, Senegal, and Mozambique. And from the first round of matches, Kenya, they lost 92-54 to Senegal, lost 83-66 uh, to Angola, and then defeated Mozambique 79-62. So, Joao, get ready. We'll be joining you in just about five minutes' time. But from the experience of playing in Rwanda's uh, coach Sadat, let me ask, first of all, about Senegal, who really turned on the style, uh, the style when it came to the second half of that game. Uh, you see, like with, with Senegal, what happened is you see, you see the 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 thing about sports is uh, the the end result doesn't tell the whole picture. We uh, the, the first three quarters we were, were in the game. The fourth quarter is now when uh, when we we only scored one basket. We scored two points. Senegal scored like almost 40 points. That's why that's where the difference came in. Because uh, besides that, if if uh, our our shots were were falling. Uh, we could have been talking about a different story right now, but uh, it, it did not fall. But we, we ended up losing with, uh, with, the, with that, with that margin. And for you, Bush, from a player's perspective, I know you did, uh, you did not play at the qualifiers in November. Um, that was from the 25th to the 27th of uh, November 2020 at the Kigali Arena. Your take on Senegal? Uh, my take is that. Um for for example, for our team, uh, with the with the small complications that we we had going on, with me not being able to play for the team because of COVID, uh, with Preston's uh, paper with FIBA not being done, um, so we just we were just underhanded, you know, um, like Desmond Owili, he ended up um, getting injured a little bit, so he couldn't really play like the rest of the game the way he wanted to. So from a player's perspective, I think. Uh, if we have the full, like our troops all lined up, we 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 put up a way better fight than what what we saw uh, on, at that time, you know. So our team, uh, the way if we have every when we have everybody, and this you you'll all witness this in, in this coming February, you'll witness it by yourselves because we'll now we'll have a full house. We believe in ourselves. We believe in our practicing. We have a good coaching staff. Our technical, the technical bench is, a, is amazing. And uh, 
everybody will be there, so get in tune for a revenge match, which is going to be much, much better than what you saw. What, Coach Sadat, looking at it, ideally, I mean, look, um, on paper, the team that really should have given the Morans, you know, a real hiding would have been Angola. But what's the difference with Senegal? How much work have they put in when it comes to, you know, preparing their side for this competition? You see, uh, with, uh, with Senegal, you know, you know Senegal, uh, they are... Their, their programs, their programs, they are uh, very successful. You see, they, they, they started early in terms of, uh, uh, and they, they have strong programs. Like they, they have, I think they have like two or three players in the NBA. So, so with that, and as 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 we are, we are to get uh, a player playing the NBA. So they, them, they are, they, and uh, uh, you see, with with having that those kind of structure, it does help when when you when you're playing these kind of games. And let's talk about Angola now, Africa's top ranked side, 32nd in the world, um, but at the moment second in Africa behind Nigeria. And what was the takeout from that 83-66 loss? Oh, the takeout, the takeout was one. Uh, we can, one, we can compete with Angola. Uh, we, we couldn't mark the physicality at some point. That's why the, we, we, we lost the game because uh, at some point, uh, they played more physical and uh, the, the, we can, uh, and the aggression were, the, and the aggression and execution were, were better than us. So us we we need to we, as soon, we, we're working on the physicality and the aggression and uh, our finishing. I I know the if if we meet if we meet them we we I, I, I like my chances against them. And for you, Bush, by the way, a coach has mentioned about physicality. What's the aspect of the local game as compared to what is out there? And considering that uh, you've played college basketball in the United States and you've also had an opportunity to play in different countries on the continent. Um, the thing about physicality is um, weight room, weight room, weight room. We have to lift and lift and lift, which we are, we are doing right now. We've been preparing for it. Um, Throughout, um, we've been getting ready um, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, help from, uh, from the government and from the K KBF. Uh, we have a weight room that they set up for us. Uh, we are going there every day, you know, after morning practice. We practice almost three times a day. You know, morning practice, afterwards, you know, we go by the weight room, you know, you have to lift and get more physical, get, get bigger, get stronger, you know. And then, so, so that you prepare your body, you know, even weightlifting, it also helps with the uh, prevention of injuries and everything, you know. So we've been getting ready and we've been preparing for it. So come, come February, even as you mentioned with Angola, I, I feel like we have even better chances of beating them. All right, that's Bushu Mkora. He's a center for the Kenya Morans. And we also have got Coach uh, Sadat with us. He's a Sadat Gaya. And uh, by the way, Coach Sadat, get uh, greetings from uh, one of our directors, Morris. He says <coughs> when he was in high school at Aquinas, you actually, um, you are coaching that side and he was part of uh, the cheering squad, the noisemakers. So he sends you regard. <laughs> he sends you some regards, Coach Sadat. Okay. Now, let's move, uh, get on to Zoom now and speak to Joao Shival. Joao, a very good morning to you from Nairobi. Good morning, um, Daniel. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you again. Um, uh, thank you to invite me to participate in this program today to talk about uh, basketball in Africa after basket qualifiers. And uh, Joao, let's get straight. Uh, let me get straight onto the point to do with this. Mo uh, Mozambique playing against Kenya. It was 79-62. Uh, that was the result that you know uh, came from that game. So Joao, tell us at the end of it all, what was the takeout for Team Mozambique? Um, that was not. It was uh, tough for us because. Um, uh, when we, we was looking for this uh, competition, this qualification, we was looking to, to win uh, the, the games against Kenya. Uh, but we lost 70 points. Uh, that's why I can say it will be difficult to us to qualify for the Afro basket. Um, because if we want to, to, to qualify to, to, for, for the Afro, to Afro basket, we have to, to win at least... Um, 70, uh, 17 points, that's uh, meaning will not be easy for us. But uh, basketball is a basketball, it's a game. We're still playing, we're still um, uh, training uh, to, 
to see how uh, how can we do uh, during the the, this, the 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 last window that will take place in Cameroon. Uh, the national team uh, already is, uh, is already in training. Uh, they started to train in um, December, uh, last December. Uh, now we the, the team are, are getting to the second um, uh, second phase of this preparation. Um, that one important thing, uh, um, um, Mozambique decided to change uh, the national coach. Uh, Milano Nakom, at uh, this time, uh, uh, he decided to resign for the national team. Now uh, the team is, is um, the new national coach. It's called Miguel Wander. It's one of the most experienced coach in Mozambique, but it's the first time that he, he is taking care of the national team. Uh, now he is he's working uh, up, uh, around um, the 20, uh, 25 players uh, to select uh, 12 that will be part of uh, uh, the window that will take place this month, this month in Cameroon. So, Joao, let, let's, let me mention this to you, and it's all about Angola. Uh, something that you share with Angola is basically the Portuguese language. Your takeout from that game that Mozambique played against Angola, it was the opening game, um, Angola winning 87-58. What has been the development in Angola from your side? Um, Angola will take a little bit different team for this competition because uh, they, uh, for the, that, uh, the last window, they decided to take um, basic, basic, basically uh, the players from uh, Petro Atletico de Luana. As you know, Petro uh, was supposed to play at Ball, Basketball African League. That's why they decided to take that team. But for this time, they will take um, the very, very first team for this competition. I know that uh, the league in Angola doesn't start, didn't start, but they are doing uh, the, their best to uh, prepare the national team. I know that the national team started to, to work last month, January. And uh, I think Angola and Senegal, they are favorite to qualify for the Afro, Afro basket. That means Mozambique and Kenya will have to play uh, each other to find a way to go to the Afro basket. Well, and talking about Kenya, actually, we've got, you know, uh, the Kenyan Morans here. We've got one player and the coach. Joao, your takeout from that game that Kenya played against Mozambique, 79-62 was the result. How strong mm -hmm. did you find the Kenyan team to be? And how would Mozambique respond to the Morans? As I told um, on the first time, it was tough. Uh, we we were not expected to lose against Kenya, but uh, for me, uh, I remember uh, last year, Ferroviaire de Maputo play, played against uh, Kenya Port Authority, and uh, I saw the way uh, they played Kenya Port Authority. If you remember, Kenya Port Authority won Ferroviaire de Maputo, and the Ferroviaire de Maputo is the base of the national team. Uh, that's why I, I, I say it for a lot of people here in Mozambique, guys, play, pay attention on that uh, Kenya national team. So we went for that game that we are we are better than Kenya. That in, in our main, in our minds. That's why the team went there and uh, played like just this team we, we win them. But uh, unfortunately, we lost. Uh, Kenya was uh, completely better than Mozambique. They played uh, a very tough second half. That's why they win. Uh, you win. <laughs> you won that match, uh, 17 games. As I told you, will be tough ones, uh, but we still preparing. That is a basketball game. We are we are focused on that game because to win Angola and to win Senegal will be difficult. That's why we have to uh, to, to pay attention. We have to focus ourselves on that 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 game. The most important thing: the competitions in Mozambique already started uh, last month. Uh, the teams are now around uh, five and six games. Uh, played, I think um, this uh, can help us to make um, a, a nice performance in Cameroon. Now, I want to talk about um, the rankings, FIBA rankings that were released. Mozambique, 94th in the world, uh, 14th in Africa, do uh, dropped three places from those rankings. Kenya is 20 places mm -hmm. lower on, uh, uh, than Mozambique when it comes to the global stage. 20th in Africa, do the rankings really matter when it comes to this competition? 
Sometimes yes, but uh, we have to prove this in the fields. Uh, but we didn't, uh, unfortunately, we didn't prove it in, in the fields. But uh, it's important to see that uh, some African teams um, are growing uh, uh, very fast. Uh, the Kenya is among of the, those countries. Kenya, South Sudan, um, Rwanda, Uganda. So, so are the teams that are, 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 are improving. Uh, um, uh, during these last uh, last last years, uh, Mozambique have to, to 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 change something internally. We have a tradition in basketball. If you see the last ten edition of uh, for basketball, Mozambique were there, but uh, we didn't uh, uh, pass uh, the, the, the tenth position. We have to to do uh, different things to to improve. So, but uh, we are we are we are in danger position now. If we we, we, we can't qualify for the for basket, that's mean Mozambique will will drop. Um, 10 times participation in Afro basket. So I think uh, uh, ranking, it's okay. We, we are there. We got this position because we did uh, to be there. But uh, I think we have to, to work more uh, because we are looking for other teams. They are uh, improving uh, every day. Uh, Tanzania, uh, Kenya, uh, Rwanda, uh, Uganda. So we have to do something, uh, otherwise we'll be out of uh, the, that uh, Afro basket will take place this year in Rwanda. Uh, that's why I think we have to play. Don't uh, uh, think about ranking only, but we have to work uh, to, 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 to win uh, the, the match in the field. And I'll let Coach Sadat Gaya, who is with us in studio, uh, g give a reaction to that matter about rankings. Coach Sadat, do rankings really matter? Because you see, rank, uh, ranking shows how how good the team is, and uh, also gives you confidence if if you are high, if you're ranked higher. And uh, part of being being ranked higher is uh, playing playing a lot of international games and uh, international exposure. So so what happens? What happens? Uh, you see, universally, what happens is when people are not ranked, uh, you tend to underestimate them. Yeah, and uh, it, it happens all the time in the sports. So sometimes when you're not ranked, it, it's also a good thing because now you, you're like, okay, let me let me go against uh, the, the, the so-called uh, better than us players or opponents. Well, you've had it from Coach uh, Joao, your reaction to that, and also a, a final word on the general outlook of the status of basketball on the African continent. Are this for me? Yes, that's for you, Joel. You, you know, in reaction to <laughs> yes. what uh, Coach Sadat has said and uh, your outlook on basketball on the African continent. Um, let's let's see something. Uh, if you remember, the last half of basket was taking place in uh, 2017. That's mean uh, from this competition. Uh, we have to. We had a change. Uh, the the Afro basket we played in for each for for four years. That means um, if we will, we miss the opportunity to be in this Afro basket, uh, we'll miss a lot. Um, I want to go back to the past to remember that Kenya played in the African. Uh, you went to the final. That was a big sign that Kenya gave uh, in Africa uh, basketball. Uh, that's why I think it's not... Um, if the people are not uh, um, um, following the Af basketball in Africa, was, would say that uh, Kenya is, a, is, a, is not a good team. But for me, I think Kenya uh, did a good job during the African. Uh, Kenya, uh, as a team, the, 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 the champion of Kenya, uh, Kenya Port Authority, did a good job during the uh, ball qualifiers. That's why I think um, the bas basketball in Africa is changing. Uh, uh, Naturally, we have uh, teams like Nigeria, Senegal, Angola, Egypt, and Morocco. That's, that those teams are in the uh, in the in the in the, the, the first first first, first uh, what, I, I, what can I say is the first place in terms of ranking, in terms of performance in Africa. But uh, in the middle, we have uh, teams like Cameroon, or, um, Mali, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. So, we have to, to, to do uh, something to be part of this um, group of, of teams, of nations that are playing uh, at a high level in terms of basketball. But 
other things, um, one important thing uh, that ball can uh, improve, can 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 help Africa to to improve the level because um, as you see, uh, even in the ball qualifiers, we saw uh, teams from Madagascar, teams from uh, Kenya, teams from Uganda, Rwanda, uh, South Sudan. Uh, uh, they did um, well. They performed well in this continent. I think ball with the Afro basket, Afro can will help to improve the competition here in our continent. Joao Shival, he is a journalist with TV Mozambique and uh, with a little Portuguese I know, I can tell you, obrigado for making your time this morning. <laughs> Thank you, obrigado. Sorry for my English because I, I used to stay a lot of, lot of time without talking English. That's why, but this is a kind of opportunity for me. It's good. Uh, I would like to... Uh, to to to, uh, to thank for this opportunity to, uh, to talk about the um, sport in Africa, basketball in our continent. Uh, I would like to say hello for all Kenyans and for your program, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, Joao Shival, journalist with TV Mozambique, speaking to us from Maputo via Zoom. Well, we continue with our conversation with Coach Sadat Gaya and Center. Tom Bush Wamkota, who are in the studio with me. And from what you've had, Coach Sadat, uh, from what Joao Shival has said, your take on the way Afri Afrocan ball and uh, the pre qualifiers are changing the landscape of basketball in Africa? Yeah, yeah uh, they, they are changing the, uh, the, way, the way African. Uh, African are becoming dominant in terms of you see you see if you go like us we went for Afro uh, African we went to uh, KPA KPA uh, KPA from Kenya represented uh, Kenya in the in the ball league you see you see with with those kind of uh, competition it 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 gives it gives the local players incentive to to improve and uh, to show their uh, to showcase their their, their talents there. So, so, so by 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 giving them that opportunity, we'll have a lot of talents because because mostly we, we we've had talents going out. So we we will encourage the, the 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 local players who are who are around to to showcase their their talents to the world. Now, Bush, I want to come to you because Joel mentioned about Morocco, and you have a first. And ex you have first-hand experience about playing in Morocco, so you can talk about the quality of some of those countries that is mentioned. Yeah, you see, um, like a lot of countries, mostly uh, basketball, they have dominated. Like the North African countries have dominated basketball for a long time. You know, like Tunisia, Morocco, Egypt. Um, they are very good teams. Uh, right now, like uh, okay, Nigeria, they have like a lot of foreign players like are playing outside Nigeria. Like the local league is not very good, but then like they have a lot of players that are playing like in the NBA in Europe and stuff like that. You know, looking at teams like Senegal, who are very, who have been also been very dominant in the, in the, in the continent, and uh, teams like Cameroon, Angola. You know, you know everybody already knows about them. Um, just playing in North Africa, I played in, in North Africa for a couple, for a few years already, and uh, I think they 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 they. they, they, they what they do best is execution. They do not necessarily have like the the most talented players, but then they execute like um, their tactics very well. That's that has really helped them to to really dominate uh, the game of basketball around the around the continent. But um, honestly, if you if you if you look at it, the demographic of basketball right now in the last three four years, like. Um, the Zone 5, which includes like our region, the Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, uh, Ethiopia, and, and stuff like that. You know, South Sudan. Um, we have we have really we are we're, we are really on an upward you know on an upward improvement scale. You know, like if you look at the the previous uh, continental championships and continental um, continental games. So for us, I think uh, if we all we have to do is just keep working. We keep working, keep improving day by day. We can't really sit here and uh, worry about what everybody else is doing. You know, we have to focus on us, focus and play our game. Um, our game is mostly transition. And um, 
in a half court set, we, uh, we have uh, uh, very good sets that uh, our coaches have put in for us and the technical bench, uh, the advise us on, on what we are supposed to do. So for us, we are going to focus on us mostly than uh, what we're focusing on other teams because uh, we, if I do what I do better than you do what you do, I'll, I'll beat you at the end of the day. So we have to focus and do what we do better than any other team that we'll go, we are going to face. Now, coach said that there's something Bush has mentioned, and uh, let me call it execution. Let me just use the same words he used, and making it, you know, uh, delivering it. And one coach in a different sport actually told me one of the biggest advantages we have is that we grow up catching, th throwing and catching things. So hand-eye coordination um, almost is natural for us. How much more do you think we need to do uh, to keep up with the improvement that we've seen in the basketball team playing for Kenya. See, see, like, uh, like uh, when it comes to execution, you're right. We, uh, like as as the Kenya Morans, we we uh, last uh, this weekend we, we we beefed we beefed up our coaching uh, our our coaching team by by adding uh, Coach Liz Miles. Coach Liz Miles comes from Australia. She one of her strengths is uh, analytics. That's uh, uh, analytics uh, statistics. Uh, video, video, and uh, uh, breakdowns of uh, of games. So, so you see, with 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 uh, with uh, she, she's bringing what what she brings to the table is uh, execution, finishing, uh, uh, studying opponents, scouting, those kind of things. She, she, she's she's bringing a different angle to the game. So, so with that. Uh, our, our, our execution will, 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 Im, will improve much, m much better and uh, I, I expect us by, by the time we, we, we get to Cameroon will be a much different team. Well, that is Sadat Gaya. He is the coach of the Kenya Morans, the national men's basketball team. They are preparing for the Afro Basket qualifiers. They will be taking place in Yaoundé, Cameroon, and Kenya will be playing on the 18th, 19th, and 20th of February. And also on set, we have got Tom Bushwamukota. He's a center for the national team, and he's also going to be giving us some insights from the players' perspective. We'll be taking a short break when we get back. Let's hear, catch up on what Coach Sadat has said, video analysis and the impact on how the Morans play. That's coming back after a short while. <laughs> 